joining us now is Philip Jackbo, spokesperson, Environmental Rights Action and Friends of the Earth, Nigeria. Philip, good morning. Good morning. And let me say Happy New Year in February. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure being here. Nice to see you. You guys morning. are doing a yeah, very good thank job. You very thank much. you very much. Thank you. And you are doing great too. Yeah. Now, the point there is, alarm is raised again. We get this almost every year now as to uh, the level of rainfall, the impact and uh, what Nigerians should do. But nothing ever gets done from the experience, a la experience in the last two, three, four, five years. Mm. Every time these warnings come out, nothing happens until the real thing happens. What should we be looking at this year, really? Well, I think the first thing um, I should comment is the fact that uh, TVC did a very good analysis by saying that in the last 10 years, one of the greatest floods we've ever had happened in 2012. Yes, 2012. Yeah. Um, I think 21 states out of the 36 states of the Federation was flooded. Yes. Um, a lot of things were put in place. There was a presidential task force involving a lot of the uh, very wealthy in the society. They came together, they put some money together. After that, we didn't hear anything. The good thing this time around, um, or what which has been happening in the last five, six years, is that we have these early warning systems. And the implication is that the states can plan, the federal government can plan. Mm. But unfortunately, unfortunately, what we've been seeing over time is the states prefer to wait till the last moment when these emergencies are on ground and start talking about ecological funds, when there are little things they can do to ensure that people are safeguarded. Mm. So it's unfortunate. In 2020, we have heard it. The rains are going to come very early. Yeah. We're already in February. And it's going to long, a, a longer yeah. period of time. Exactly. Last, last a long period of By time. By now, we should be hearing, for instance, that NEMA has gotten helicopters, mm. um, speed boats, so that they will visit those remote areas where you expect people to be trapped. Mm. The state governments are supposed to be telling us that they've built areas for emergency. Mm. Where um, people can relocate, yeah, where people can relocate to. Yes, yeah. that, is what we should, that is what is happening in civilized climes. But unfortunately, that is not what is happening. And then, um, of course, the, the, the greater issue is that we don't have a lot of synergy between NEMA, the National Emergency mm. Management Agency, and the state, their state uh, 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 counterparts. Mm. So these are some of the problems that has um, made this flooding thing a recurrent. Uh, but uh, but thing. Is, yeah. is it just uh, what my issue is? What is causing this uh, rainfalls? Is it a, a climate change issue or um, human activity that is triggering these issues? Well, that it, we see it's in clear. Time? It's clear enough. Um, since two thousand and twelve, we have been having more manifestations of the climate change. Uh, 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 in, in the, not only in Nigeria, it's across, across the globe. The globe yeah. So uh, in Nigeria, we're having heavy rains. In Cameroon, we're having heavy rains. Um, the situation in 2012 was caused by the fact that we had very, very heavy rains in Nigeria and Cameroon. Cameroon has the Lagdo Dam, which is upland, and we are down, you know, uh, downland. Yeah. So w when the, the dams became threatened, they had no option but to release waters. It also happened last year, and it is likely to happen this year. We were, when the Dagdo Dam was built, I think the arrangement was that Nigeria will also build buffer dams down the line. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I think that was 1979. Till date, Nigeria has not done that. So we prefer this fire brigade approach rather than taking concrete actions. Now, where does the human activity come in? Um, of course, when people build on floodplains, who do you blame? It is a government that is supposed to ensure that this does not happen. It's happening all over the country. Supposed green areas, mm -hmm. people are building on those areas. Who is giving them permits? Who is sanctioning those who, who do this uh, kind of things? So we we'll have to go back to government. Mm -hmm. Government is supposed to do what it is supposed to do. All but right. unfortunately, let, it's not let, the let's, case. Let's take it from the eyes of the, the people themselves now. Uh, government is meant to be the one responsible for evacuating the people, enlightening everyone. But on the on the side of the people what can they do well uh, the pe people need a lot of education okay mm. i think tvc is doing more education than even the government should do <laughs> because by now you should have national orientation agency mm. talking to people we have yeah. tv we have radio uh, we have local languages mm. but do you hear these things it's not happening but on the side of people if the people are educated i think a lot of people will even evacuate themselves yeah. without yeah. waiting yeah. for yeah. government yeah. to yeah you know, uh, come in. So this is where we are today. This is the problem. Now, if we see things from the climate change perspective, there's the issue of cutting down on greenhouse gas emission and all of that. But there's also the drive to develop. Mm. 
-hmm. There's a drive to establish uh, industries. There's a drive, you know, to take care and suck up all the unemployment challenges. And all of these things have to do with uh, more companies, more industries, more factories out there. How do we balance this, this side, these uh, arguments? Well, I think things must be done in a responsible manner. Okay. Um, most nations of the Western world are still developing mm -hmm. and uh, are looking at uh, safe options for development. Um, so they talk of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, we are still heavily dependent on fossil fuels. Uh, so if you are bringing more cars into the country, if you are uh, building industries, you are naturally going to depend on uh, this fossil fuel, petroleum products. Um, we have generators. Go to the areas where you have, we face me, I face you, and those kinds. You have these generators. All depends on fossil fuel. So if we must um, take care of our environment, if we must um, do our bit so that we are not at the mercy of nature, then we must also start looking at a post, um, post fossil fuel economy. Um, it is not too hard. Some countries even on the continent are doing some little things. If you go to Ghana, for instance, that they don't use plastic bags anymore. Mm. They use paper bags that are biodegradable. So they are putting some little, little things in place to, to make their environment safer. But, uh, but do you think, uh, how challenging do you think it would be to putting those things into place here, seeing how this has become a part of us, using uh, <laughs> generators? Mm. You talk, people will tell plastic you that bags. plastic bags, people yeah. will tell you that uh, that is the only option they have when it comes to gen using generators. And w does this also reflect our commitment towards dealing with uh, issues of climate change as well? Well, uh, fortunately, it is not hard. It only takes the political will. If we match our talk with action, I think we'll get there. Uh, Nigeria, for instance, uh, is part of the uh, climate change debate. We go to the conference of parties and we make commitments. When we come back home, what do we do? Some of the commitments Nigeria as a nation uh, has made or co and continues to make is that we are going to come back home and we're going to have mass transit. Mass transit will make you and I keep our cars back home. Mass transit will take the stress of the roads. Because at one fell swoop, a, 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 the train, for instance, mm -hmm. would take hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. These are, they are, they are not too much. They are not rocket science. Um, if we are talking of um, transiting, it is also not rocket science. Because what we make from fossil fuel is enough for us to transit to clean energy. And these renewables that are cheap and affordable. But you are engaging with government. Yes. Uh, and so how much are you pressing to see that a government, you know, meet up with all of its commitments? Well, one of the things we are doing is what we are doing here. We continue to talk, but like I said, is the political will there? Uh, is, is the government in bed with the fossil fuel industry? These are the kind of things that we must take, in, take into consider, uh, consideration. So this kind of um, industrialization model that we have adopted is one of the reasons why we are having these unusual rains, and we have been having more of them since 2010, 2012 was, was, was mammoth. 21 out of the 36 states were flooded. The rains intensified, not only it was across, across Africa. Cameroon had to release water from the Lago Dam, which, which flooded uh, states mm -hmm. here in Nigeria. But the political will is the most important thing. NIMET has warned that we're going to have unusual rains. Where are we taking it to from that point? Mm -hmm. Are the states prepared? Is the Nigeria National Emergency Management Agency prepared? Do they have what it takes to take people to safety? Uh, are the states building uh, uh, camps w that will house people? What will the states of the camps be? In 2012, I visited one of the IDPs, and you will be so shocked that you have close to like uh, 300 families, and in those places, you will have like two or three toilets. Mm. You know? And so people are likely will leave the, the camps with diseases. Women are sharing toilets with men. Oh. People who are physically disabled will crawl to those places. Th are they making preparations for these things now? This yeah, kind of yeah. Philip, th there is a talk about the, uh, there's a much talk about the issue of ecological funds, yeah. which a lot of states are not accessing. The fund is just there. Would you advocate that instead of waiting to have a disaster, a natural disaster before the fund is deployed, would you advocate the monies to be used as a prevent, uh, to prevent any kind of disaster? I think most of the states mm. have the capacity to build these places that will accommodate people when disaster strikes. Mm. Waiting for the ecological fund is, is a disaster on its own because these disasters we are talking about will not wait. So why don't we act proactively? Okay. And that is what the NIMET warning 
that we are going to have unusual rains, mm -hmm. is supposed to instigate. Yeah. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't see anything happen, and it has been a recurrent uh, decimal. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Now, yeah. it's been advised that adequate preparation should be taken. From your point of view as an expert, what will be adequate enough in terms of preparation? Uh, thank you. Um, I think since the warning has come from NIMET, mm. uh, adequate preparation will mean the federal government, for instance, um, ensuring that uh, NEMA has all that it takes to be able to reach people who will likely suffer in the case of uh, the floods. Uh, we are talking about boats, we are talking about life jackets, mm -hmm. we are talking about helicopters. There are likely going to be places that will be inaccessible uh, and as such we cannot say those people are going to be abandoned. Mm -hmm. People are going to be evacuated. We've seen this happen in other places. It is possible here. So that is at the level of the federal government. Uh, the state emergency management agencies must also work hand in hand with the federal to ensure that, you know, even at the state level, we have the same um, kind of plans. And at the same time, the, the state governments must make sure that the uh, camps for people who are likely to be displaced are set up. It is not when, uh, if it will happen. It is exactly when it will happen. Now we're going to have longer rains like mm -hmm. we had. Mm -hmm. So the implication is that it's also going to affect farming. Mm -hmm. So um, plans have to be made in this regard. But I think one that is very, very important is that the state governments and the federal government must make arrangements for people who will be evacuated. Mm -hmm. And for now, the, whatever is going to block uh, the, the floodplains must be removed. Mm -hmm. It is simply, um, we, we've been contending with this over the years. Mm -hmm. And it's the same cycle. People complain, people will weep, they've lost property and you know, things have continued on yeah. along this path. We, 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 yeah, we, we often hear on when things like this happen and they say people should come to their aid, government should help them, and, and you know, the call on well meaning Nigerians. One can only feel that pain. But from the eyes of the people who are the first to feel the brunt of this, what should they be doing now? What should they likely uh, be doing? Well, we've had a uh, recurring pattern. Mm. Um, and we've seen over the years that government does not actually come to the rescue of people. Yeah. So, um, survival must come first. So personal survival, if you know you are living along where you have those floodplains, it is simply normal that you move. You, we don't have to wait for government anymore. It is anticipated that agencies like National Orientation Agency starts notifying people. Uh, but it, with what has happened in the past, we can see that people are usually taken on our ways. But we have this notice. It is starting sometime in February this month, so it's not far a, from a us lot of anymore. people. A lot of people don't know if they live, live on the flood on plains. the flood plain. If if where they reside is actually the route for uh, waters when the, when the rains come. Well, in the last uh, ten years, particularly, mm. we've seen when it rains, some mm. parts of Lagos, for instance, yes. are usually flooded. Uh, even along the Lekki stretch, even along the Aja stretch, mm. even along the Jack on this stretch, those areas you see that it's. They, they suffer a lot of loss. They suffer a lot of damages. Lives are lost because most of those areas are like a basin. So the water mm. comes in and water and cannot, go, to find cannot go out because, yeah. for instance, the lagoon is blocked. Hmm. People are so built along the, the channels that water is supposed to go out into the lagoon and go back to the Atlantic. Hmm. So right. those areas, of course, the, the permits were given to people. And it is government that is doing those things. So it's, we have a mix-up of policies but this has cost lives and property so things must change this year that is what we're so talking about i'd like for you to quickly touch on the likely implications especially economically as it re and health wise perhaps by way of education and to, al to also make people understand that if you don't move these are the things that could happen exactly well uh, on a large scale of course it's going to affect agriculture mm -hmm. But the displacements that will also occur when people are removed or people live where um, they, they traditionally live mm. is going to cause a lot of children will not go to school, people will fall ill. You know, it's, it's, it's a multiplier effect. But like I said, it has been happening over, over time. time. So people must prepare. But we want government to be proactive. We don't want a, that the recurrence of 
you know, government saying, oh, it has happened, they are looking for ecological funds, when they can easily set up camps that people can relocate to. Mm. It happens in the U.S. Florida exists. It's, it's always uh, during the typhoon season. Mm. People but they make arrangements to evacuate people. Yeah. 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 Some people deliberately choose not to evacuate. Mm. Yes. But they are, they are at least... The Th those are exceptional cases.